Hi, I'm Dante Thompson, president of Dub Broadcasting. And for over 40 years now, you, the viewers, have supported us in missions, both here in the U.S. and abroad. This year will be our fourth year supporting Cornet Ministries in their mission in Bulgaria. Their summer camp there is doing wonderful, and uh, without you, it wouldn't be possible. I want to uh, thank everyone who has supported for the last three years, and I want to thank those who are going to continue to support this year. But right now, I want to take you with us to Bulgaria and see what God's doing there. Just to be a part of all this, I look at myself this morning and think, who am I? I believe that every child will keep something special in their heart from our time together. If we can just make a small part and show the love of God and show the passion that we have for people, that's what it's all about. God's been confirming to me that He is working. I feel like I've sensed that His Holy Spirit at work in this place. Bulgaria is a country of a little over 7 million people situated on the Black Sea in southeastern Europe. Yes. Bordering on Turkey, Bulgaria has always been a crossroad between Europe and Asia, and because of that has seen more than its share of troubles. Many areas of the country suffer from high rates of poverty and the problems that come with it crime, hunger, human trafficking, prostitution, and many more. As with many situations like this, it is unfortunate that the children suffer the most. Many come from broken homes, situations of domestic violence, and sometimes don't know where their next meal is going to come from. One organization that is helping to change this is Cornet Ministries. They've been operating in Bulgaria for over 25 years. Cornet Ministries organizes churches and missions projects in villages in northeastern Bulgaria to help bring hope to thousands of people, especially children. Just to be a part of all this, I look at myself this morning and think, who am I that the Lord would look down and and ask of me to do what I have done in the in Tina and Tim and all of us together when we just said yes Lord what do you want us to do and it, it's just been a journey that has been so fulfilling uh, so rewarding building your faith stepping out on the God's Word that he will supply every need and he will give favor when you need it and so that's what I thank him for this morning so much is for his goodness and his mercy and his favor for us. It's wonderful to know the Lord, isn't it? One program that is very near and dear to my heart is the Christian summer camp in the little village of Abrochiste. Every summer, Cornet Ministries buses in children from as many as 12 different impoverished villages to go to camp for a week. It's a week of singing, fellowship, food, swimming, sports, and most importantly, the chance to meet Jesus. The purpose of the summer camp is for the children who come for the first time to hear the Word of God and the rest of the children who come for many years. Our purpose is to confirm the Word of God in their lives. That is the purpose. More children to hear about God. He helps us here at this camp every day to be able to reach out to the unreachable, reach out to the unloved. And we just want to worship Him and we want to praise Him because, you know, He is the source and the strength of everything. Cornet Ministries even supplies transportation for these children as none of their families could afford it otherwise. Each week the buses of the children roll up and they walk through the gates for the best week of their year. When they come in on Monday, like I said, they don't know what to expect because some of them never have been here before. 
we go up to music after breakfast, and uh, so they're looking a little bit. The words are up there on the screen, but uh, they're not quite sure about all of it, and they look and they sit. They don't clap too much. They participate as best they can them trying to figure out what's going to happen here. And then uh, after the Monday morning uh, worship time, uh, they've looked it over and they've kind of decided, well, you know, I like what I see and what I hear. So by afternoon, they are starting to clap their hands more and, and singing the songs and learning the new songs that we're teaching. Through music, we reach the children. They love to dance. They remember the lyrics and the songs. We're able to touch them through the music. They want to dance more and more. They never get tired to dance. Разбира се, да. Разбирам, че децата много обичат да пеят. Те пеят с чисти сърца. Те го възприемат така не както възрастните хора. Обичат да се покланят пред Бога. Like when we, even though I can't sing a lot of the songs, I know um, I can do the actions or something, and, and the actions speak a lot about the gospel. I feel like God's been confirming to me that He is working. I feel like I've sensed that His Holy Spirit at work in this place. After the morning worship time, the most important part of the camp day begins, the Bible lessons. The children can split up into three different age groups for lessons, and the teachers work with the students each day to build the children's faith and their relationship with Jesus. I was able to help out with lessons for the youngest class. <laughs> The leaves are the names of the children, which represents that we are all a big family of Jesus. He is the tree and we are the leaves that are attached to the trees. All of us who believe in God, who go to church, we are all a part of a big family. The foundation is Jesus. He is the tree and He brings fruit, which are the children. The most important thing that I want to teach them is to love each other. As Christians, believers, we should respect each other. And that's why I chose lessons to show them that we are all as one. And if one of us falls down, we are not part of the tree anymore, but the rest need to help them. This will lift us up and encourage us. The most important thing is that we give them hope that they have a dad who would always listen to them. They have a father in heaven who hears their prayers and he would always help them and he always loves them. It takes a lot of people to operate the camp, from the Bulgarian staff that is involved year-round to volunteers and groups that come in from the summer specifically to work at the camp. It is a lot of fun for the volunteers, but they provide a lot of valuable help to the camp as well. I've been mostly helping with the children's groups, uh, in particular the little group, which I think is four to eight or something, age group. Um, I've been helping them to do crafts, to go to the park, to play with them, um, to provide meals for them, um, and generally just to love them and to be um, 
a witness to Jesus to them who don't necessarily know him or know how he loves them. That's my aim, is to show them affection and love and to hopefully impart some of Jesus' love to the little ones. Um, so I don't speak any Bulgarian. Um, um, when I first arrived here, that was quite difficult. Um, working with children who expect you to speak Bulgarian and who don't understand any English at all, that was quite hard. Um, and over the three weeks I've been here, it's been a constant adjustment. But eventually you do get used to it and you learn, pick up certain Bulgarian words like hello, how are you, what's your name, so that's good. Um, but also, especially with the little groups, you can um, use sign language quite effectively. They understand that quite well, so you can point to something or you can um, you know, mime something like swimming or something like that. That does work, especially with the little ones. Um, yeah, also with the little ones, it's not so much a matter of speaking as a matter of showing affection and showing love. If you just hold their hands or give them a cuddle or throw a ball with them or, you know, just swing a swing, it's more about that rather than imparting lots of words to them. And he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond our wildest dreams. Yes, and he loves me, loves me and he loves me. This is before the world began. Um, there was a little girl that I really loved actually. She was about this high. Um, her name was Raz Justina, I think. Um, and she had bed bugs all the way down her arms, or bed bites, whatever you call them, all the way down here. Um, her teeth on both tops were rotten, so completely black. Um, she didn't really have any shoes. But the shoes she did have all had holes in and she couldn't do them up properly. So every time she walked somewhere, she'd have to stop, take her shoes off, put them back on again about three or four times. I really got attached to this little girl because she obviously, among the other children, was the one who looked the neediest. She looked um, like she was in need of material stuff as well as love. And over the course of the week, I got to know her, you know, I gave her lots of cuddles, and then by the end of the week, she became like my little child. And that was hard to let go of, um, especially as it looked from her appearance and from her emotional needs that she didn't have a lot at home. And that was quite hard to let go of, knowing where she would go back to, and knowing that I might not see her again. That was, yeah, that was quite hard. And that can be difficult, yeah, yeah. Many of the children who come to camp have either one or both, in some situations, parents absent from their lives and don't have any positive role models. This is especially hard on the teenagers who are on the verge of having to make it their own way in the world. За тях се молим. Просто страдаме за тях. Защото те се отделят, отиват в, в света. И това ни притеснява най-много. И се молим. И когато сме в молитва, Бог ни ги дава, връща ни ги. We decided uh, to prepare uh, special drama, special performance uh, with the teenagers from the third group. I didn't have to make them uh, take part in this. They were so excited about it and they really wanted to do the drama for the rest of the children to see. The message of the drama uh, says that um, in life there are things that can make you feel like you're captive, like there's no way out for you. Sometimes it's circumstances that you have no control over. Sometimes it's things that you do yourself and uh, you make mistakes and you make compromises and you ask yourself, how did I get here? But uh, we're trying to tell the children, the teenagers and even the adults that are watching the drama that God is there for them. And uh, no matter how bad the situation looks, no matter how hopeless, hopeless it is, God is always there for you and 
he just waits for you to call his name and to ask for help and he is going to help you no matter what. Sometimes only God can intervene in your life and change your life completely. There's a sense in which these kids are looking for male role models, got lots of questions, discovering their own identity, looking into faith, clearly want to respond to uh, talks about finding out about God and so great to discover their personalities. We don't speak the same language but kids seem very similar all over the world. My prayer would be that uh, we don't understand what goes on in their lives once they go home. We're not here long enough to fully understand that. Thankfully the team here have got a better idea. But my prayer would be that on a week like this that they have an encounter with God and the reality of his presence they will take with them into their own lives and that this will be a turning point for them that they can follow through in their local churches and grow in their faith. Many of the children that attend camp also attend mission churches throughout the year, churches like this one in Anativo. Terry leads the children's church and worship services there in Anativo. I can say about Anativo that my heart is there. I started there with five or six children. In the beginning, we used to have the service together, adults and children. The room was very small and on one end were the adults and on the other end were the children. But when the number of children started growing, it became too noisy. So we had to have our services outside the building so we wouldn't disturb the adults. So we started gathering at the park and I met most of the children there. We started talking about different things, they are very regular, which encourages me a lot. They come and ask questions, they want to talk to me, which shows me that they are looking for attention, for love. They are lacking communication with their parents, so they try to contact me in any way, they send me messages. Very Terry, come and talk to us. And I'm very touched that I'm accepted there. Most of them have come to the church in a different way. They are all special and unique, and I know that they were called by God. I can say about the children from the different missions where we go, Bezvodice, Ignatievo. We give them much, but they also give us much. And that keeps us going. We also get encouraged from the children because we give them love, but we also receive a lot of love from them. Every time they see me, they run to me and they give me hugs and it encourages me. It shows me that it's not meaningless what I do there. We give them love, but they also give us love. One of the girls, a few days ago from Ignatia, who sent me a message saying that she loved me so much, and I said, yeah, but when you grow up, you will forget about me. And she said, no, I will never forget about you, no matter how many years pass. And that made me cry because I know her for four or five years. She's one of the regular kids. And the words that she said, it touched me so much. And I believe that every child will keep something special in their heart from our time together. And I will keep something special. And always for glory to God. The most important part of the week is the call of salvation. These children have a chance to give their life to Jesus and also to be baptized. 
Usually, during the Thursday worship, I'm waiting for the moment from the Lord. I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to show me when is the best moment to invite the children to give them a chance to receive Jesus. Last week, 57 children came forward. That is a great harvest. The Bible says that there is a great joy for every soul that has been saved. But up in heaven there was 57 times more joy than usual for all the souls that were saved. And it doesn't matter how much it cost us. It was a very busy week, but I am thankful to God for this harvest. Not every summer we have such harvest. One child getting saved is almost like they say in the word, a thousand angels are rejoicing and the Father in heaven is happy and he's, he's excited about because you know, he started this over 2,000 years ago. And uh, if you look back, he just was wanting to send a message that I am the Son of God and no man cometh but through me. And that's what we're here to say. Every salvation comes through Christ. And it's important because he just wanted everybody to know him because one day we'll be with him in heaven. One important thing that we do every week is to give the children an opportunity to be baptized. All through the week in their classes, they are being taught the word of God and what it means to be a Christian. And if they're not saved, then they can pray the sinner's prayer. By Thursday, they need to make up their mind if they want to be baptized. So it's not like just that they hear about it this week and then that they go get baptized. But remember, these are coming from the villages, churches, and the pastors are always talking to them about it. But the new ones that are coming in, their friends and all, then they hear about it during camp. Also, Valeria, our camp director, is right now in there teaching the children about what baptism represents, what it's all about, so that they are really prepared for what they're about to do. And it's also our tradition that when they get baptized, they also take the Lord's Supper. So I think that's a pretty good plan. It's a symbol, it's a mystery through which we tell God, we tell the angels, we tell the devil and his servants, we tell all people in the whole world that we belong to Christ and the devil has no chance with us. I lay my life in Jesus' hands and I demonstrate that by going under the water, which symbolizes the death of Christ and the burial. And before we do that, we say, we die for sin. Then we put the children under the water for a moment, and when they come out, they say, I rise for life. Through this act, through this spiritual mystery, the children confirm that they belong to Jesus. They demonstrate it to the whole world. At the end, after the water baptism, by tradition, we have communion, all of us together. And as we take the bread, we thank the Holy Spirit for the broken body of Christ and for the stripes on His body that gave us healing. Then we receive the wine, which symbolizes the life that the blood of Jesus contains. One of our volunteers from America this year was Anna, and it just so happened that she was Bulgarian and was adopted when she was five. Her old orphanage was within driving distance of the camp, so we went along with her to see some of her past. This was her first trip back since she was five. You know, I was placed there at a very young age. I'm not sure what age I was placed there, um, and I was told it's because my birth mother couldn't take care of me anymore. I remember very little, um, but I remember the rooms. 
um, especially the bedroom I slept in. It had a bunch of beds lined up against the wall. And it had a window dividing where the girls slept and where the boys slept. And I remember the area where we ate had different tables. And we'd all sit there and our main meal was bread and beans. Anna's American parents saw her photos in the brochure released by the orphanage and were moved to start the adoption process. When my mom had come and visited me, the first day I met her, I was a little confused um, just because she was crying and laughing when she met me. And she had told me that she was going to be my mother, but being a kid in an orphanage and having somebody tell you that they're going to be your mother, it's kind of debatable whether you want to believe them or not. Um, but when she has taken me out to the park to play with her, I knew right away that she was going to be my mother. Um, and the day I came to the airport and I saw my dad, I completely just fell in love with him. I knew that he was going to be my forever daddy. And so I just, I'm very close to both of my parents and they're probably the best parents I could ever ask for. We didn't know what to expect when we got to the orphanage and once we found it, it appeared to have been closed for some time. The gate was locked. Dove broadcasting does not condone trespassing, but sometimes we need to make an exception. I remember that hallway right here, this hallway down in the middle. It just used to be lined up with like circular tents. We we're just lined up in here inside were a bunch of different little toys from the kids and their shoes. And we slept over on this side where some of the rooms were. And we'd sleep over there, and all the rooms were really spread out um, from where we were going, and there would be different rooms where we'd sit and play, and then we'd go to a different room to eat. So we'd come out here for about like 30 minutes to like an hour, and we'd just play out here, and the workers would be lined up over here and just talking, doing different things. and. Um, we'd come back and we'd go back inside and we would eat and um, our meals every day were bread and beans. I remember walking around out here and there was a boy, a much older boy sitting out here and he was one of the orphans but he was with the older group and he was sitting out here and he was saying something, well obviously in Bulgarian he wasn't speaking in English, but he was saying something about wanting a family. And I remember just standing there listening to him saying that. And I don't really know what I took from that but because I was so little, but I just remember him saying that over and over and over and over again. This is where we came out of. We go on these steps, I remember, to go to the playground. And this is, oh. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a window right here. And this is where my bedroom was. There's a fox on the window. That's the fox that I always talk about. That's one of the main things I always remember. This room right here, right behind me with these windows, is where the girls slept, and that's where I slept. And all the beds were lined up. And I actually remember one night sneaking out because there was a toy that I really wanted to play with. And so I got out of the room and went to that room to go get it, and I got in trouble. And <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm remembering so much right now. I think I was upstairs when my mom had arrived because they were getting me ready. Um, she had given me a dress and a locket to wear on the day I'd come home. So they had woken me up really, really early in the morning in that same room I showed you with the fox. and. They took me up upstairs to go get ready, and I put the dress on, and I put the locket on, and I had a matching hat to go with it. And they told me to come back down here, and my mom was in, a, uh, in one, of, one of these rooms, I'm not sure, one of these rooms. And they said, go down the hall and go find your mom. She's on the room on the right. And so they didn't take me, and they just told me to go by myself. <laughs> and so I went, and I saw her, and I scared her because she was actually setting up um, goodie bags for the rest of the kids in the orphanage. And um, she actually got Bibles for um, the workers, so. Anna took the chance to send a special message back to her parents in the U.S. Hey mom and hey family. Um, this is actually Ocharva, the orphanage it came from. Um, and 
I got to see some of the rooms where I slept in and played in, and I saw the room where you came and visited me into. And I just want to say that I'm so blessed just to be your daughter, and um, I'm just, I, I can't even explain how happy I am right now. Um, and I love you so much. So. Camp goes on all summer long and usually lasts about eight weeks. During that time, we have many villages coming and going. One week always stands out though, which is the week when the children from the Special Needs Orphanage in Krishari come to visit. We got to go visit them at the orphanage in addition to bringing them to camp. I knew it wouldn't be a trip to Bulgaria without seeing these kids and so we came today to see these kids and they are having fun out here dancing and all the music's Christian music they're learning about Christ and it's just a great time but uh, tell us a little bit about the camp or the uh, the orphanage here rather well it's been here for a long time these nurses and these uh, teachers and staff here they really care about these children because they bring them to camp and we see them on a daily basis how they work and they are good people and uh, the director here has opened the door to us. We can do just whatever we need to do, you know, when we come here. That's what I love so much because these children love camp. So, you know what? We uh, give as much or more here, Dante, to this orphanage home than we do all the others put together because there's nobody helping them here. It's just like the director told me this morning. A lot of people just stop by and they'll just throw you something up, but they don't really care about the children. And he said we are the only ones that take out the time to bring them to a camp and let them enjoy themselves and come out here and and have things like this with them it's just a memory for them and so um, I just can't ever stop thinking about Krishari loving them and supporting them as much as we can so let's keep the Krishari orphanage in our prayers today in fact Betty why don't we pray over the orphanage right now yes Lord we just ask that your protection upon these children and the staff and the director Lord we just ask that your Holy Spirit will just come down in this place and be real to these children there's many of them Lord that we want to see healed those that cannot walk those are in this other building that cannot even get out of the bed Lord God you know each and every one of them by name and they are your children so we're asking Lord that your divine mercy and power that you bring forth the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ and bless this home and bless the staff that works here and we ask it all in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus and amen and amen amen you know those special needs children keep me alive almost because they don't ask of anything you know they're just enjoying life in the capacity that they have. So I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Deva is one of the special needs children and she is 19 years old and she is less than three feet tall. She is one of the happiest ones and uh, she cannot actually speak, uh, but she uh, can explain what she's trying to, to say with using her uh, arms and her um, hands and her face. Um, you can see all kinds of emotions on her face. Um, she's, um, she loves to laugh a lot, she laughs a lot. Deva, she has just been such a character this week. Um, she's just so funny and she's got a real sense of humour. Um, but she likes to do what she likes to do and she, um, she has just been a real inspiration because she's always got a smile on her face, she's always excited and wanting to do things, she's always in there um, and she's the life and sort of soul of the party, I think. I think she's the one that really stands out. There is this boy, uh, Senko, who um, had uh, all different kinds of diseases and problems. Uh, when he came for the first time, he was almost not able to walk. One of the teachers had to carry him around 
but now he can walk and not only that but he's trying to take part in all of the dances he loves to sing he loves music in general and he always uh, wants to greet everybody every one of the teachers with a song my son Ryan came along with me um, and it's that's been quite an experience as a mum and son together for a, a boy who has had problems this year um, and difficulties he has come out here and he's really given it his all and that has been brilliant for him he's made a very special relationship with Chenko um, and he he and Chenko really have built a real bond together. They've done everything together. Um, but one of the things that he did do with Chenko um, was that they played football together. And Chenko desperately wants him to be playing football. And when he came in yesterday morning and Ryan didn't happen to be there, he was looking around really worried that Ryan wasn't there and he kept going, Ryan, Ryan, actually he kept going, Brian, Brian. Um, and that, that bond, that, that friendship is just amazing. And Chenko keeps on speaking in English to Ryan, um, which is beautiful. And he keeps saying to him, I love you. And Ryan says, I love you back. And it's just, it's beautiful. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello, buddy. Oh. I love you. I love you too. I know that Ryan has really, really enjoyed it. He is exhausted, but it's a good exhaustion. It's not a horrible exhaustion, and it's something that he's going to be able to think about for the rest of his life um, and remember things that have happened. Whether he ever comes back to Bulgaria or not, he will remember the times of playing football with Chenko and he will take that home and he'll remember that he actually had somebody who completely trusted him and that is a big thing for a young person. The work in Bulgaria is not limited to just the summer camp. Tina Cornet Lissy's organization, Hope Restored Bulgaria, works in some of the most poverty stricken areas and ministers to the children and the families in some of the worst living situations imaginable. I look for great things ahead because I tell you what, Tina is, is in love with the Lord. She is sold out to God and, and is now reaching out to help the poorest of the poor here. That's where she's going, to those that cannot help themselves, have no way of escape. Tina goes to many villages to help families. We went along on one trip with her to meet one family living in a crumbling apartment block who is struggling just to get by. The, the conditions uh, where they were living were just terrible. Uh, we walked there and there was just this one little room uh, with one bed in it and there were several children sitting or lying on this bed and uh, we found out that um, they live there with their parents both of them don't work the father uh, in the family is sick with um, kidney disease and he's on dialysis he was in fact at the hospital at this moment when we went there to visit the family and um, all of them were just sleeping on this bed and they were living in this little room which was uh, uh, you could see that the, the, the mother was trying to clean it, but it, everything was just so old and uh, I, I don't know how they even live in this place. The smell was terrible and um, the whole building was uh, almost abandoned. You wouldn't believe that people are able to live in, in such place. Today, I really felt the need that we needed to buy food for these children since she has seven kids. I felt like it was our part to give to these children and to give to this mother 
Uh, so we went out and purchased food for them today. And uh, it's just a small part of what we can do to help these kids, but to them it's a big part. But we got them the staple food that they need here, like bread and potatoes and carrots and um, onions and stuff that they, pastas, rice, uh, stuff for the baby, diapers, uh, food for the baby, um, dishwashing detergent, laundry detergent, toilet paper, just stuff that we personally take for granted back home. It's very vital for these people here. And uh, if we can just make a small part and show the love of God, we show the passion that we have for people. That's what it's all about. The children were so happy to see us and they had huge smiles on their faces when we walked through the door. And they um, were looking at us with curiosity at first and then they started talking to us and smiling at us and uh, they were very happy that someone is there and someone is paying attention to them. When you show the children that you care, they, they know it. You don't have to say it with words, they just feel it. Most of the children that come to camp come from villages with high rates of poverty, crime, and child abuse. In addition to some rural villages, Tina Cornett Lissy's organization, Hope Restored Bulgaria, has a large presence in the slums of Balik. Balik, where we are targeting, uh, where we are working, is one of the places where the poverty is the most severe in all Dobrić. This is a place where people have no work. People live in houses that are about to collapse any minute. They don't have electricity, they don't have water. And this lifestyle is everything that the children see from early age. And this is their idea of life. We are a very poor family. Uh, we can't find a job. Uh, sometimes we need to go to, to, to find uh, uh, eat uh, food from the trash. And because we are gypsy, anybody not uh, come here to see uh, our, our problems here. They want to uh, take our house because they are not. Uh, not documents. Not, not documents for them, no. No, no, no, no, no, no electric is here. We have not electric. No here. water. We are, we are without water. Yes. <laughs> They sell, <laughs> uh, they sell them for, for food. Yeah. Everything they... <laughs> How much can you get for a bag of uh, bottles? Like 15 level, this is uh, $7. They have a... They have uh, ten, ten children and he have just one uh, horse. And with this horse, he helped his uh, family. Children from the neighborhood of Balak have an opportunity to go to Tina's Hope Center. They get help with their math, their language, and their reading skills. Many of these children don't even speak Bulgarian, as they come from Turkish or Gypsy families and usually end up dropping out of school at an early age. These are the children that HRBG is trying to reach. Every seed that you sow into the Hope Center, you're, you're helping make a child's life better. You're helping a child improve their education. You're helping a child understand that this is where they need to go, that they don't need to stay in the entrapped life that maybe their parents was in, because a lot of these parents here are on a second, third grade education. Some of them can't even write. I've met several women here who can't read. I do know there's a need with a lot of health issues, behavior, uh, autism is on the rise here in this country. 
Some of these kids are not even vaccinated here. Some of the kids are uh, in poor health conditions. I want to this year to be able to work to help if they need clothing. Uh, a lot of the kids run the streets here and the parents really don't believe in just sending their kids to school. And I think with this Hope Center, we can help uh, with the education. We can help uh, mentor some of these small children and also maybe can help the parents. Snezhana is uh, one of the children that come to the Hope Center in Dobridge and uh, she is one of the very special uh, girls that we have there. She is um, always sad and she is uh, not talking too much. Um, we saw Snezhana running to, uh, toward us but there was um, a huge uh, bandage on her leg and she said that she just fell. She had a huge wound on her leg. They put uh, over uh, 10 stitches on her leg in order to stop the bleeding. And uh, she was in a lot of pain. And I asked her if she has anything, any kind of pain relieving medicine that she puts on her leg. And she said, no, I don't have anything and it hurts so bad. And I felt so bad for her because I know that uh, they live in a terrible condition. I just looked around houses that have collapsed and remains of houses with glass and um, all kinds of dangerous uh, things on, on the ground. It's a place where you would never let your children go. You would never let your children play. And there she is, she lives there. But she's one of the special children that we're really trying to help at the Hope Center because uh, she has very, um, uh, she has a lot of difficulties uh, learning at school and every next year she's more and more behind her classmates and we are really worried that she may not be able to graduate school if someone doesn't help her. So we are putting a lot of efforts in trying to help Snezhana. She's really special and we are trying to help children like her. When you grow up like that, and this is all you know, and one day you're full age, you're 18 years old or more, and you have no education, then you have to find a way to provide your food. And um, the only way to do that is either to steal from other people or to sell the things that you have. And if you don't have anything, the only thing you can sell is your body. Prostitution is a major problem in Bulgaria. When you drive down the highway outside the cities, you can see girls lined up for miles trying to attract customers. When one generation of children like that um, ends up in prison or on the street as prostitutes, the next generation, their children, they will have the same future and the same destiny. And this, this has to end somewhere. So the best way to fight with this problem is to start with work with children in the beginning of this and end this cycle. Sometimes they're... 
Geçen de büyük çocuk öyle söyledi bana. Bu ne yapacağız diye yeni seyirci olacak mı diye. Ama o bunu yok tarafta mı bu arada hani ben? Tarafta topa eskazlarda yakıyız. Tiyaya büyük beş şant çıkardık. O da dört daha çok odun taşıdım. O beş şanta çekmeyece düşünürdük. Tamam ne alayım o da araba alışım için iyi bir bak. Lan eyvah salam yapsın. İnşallah. Altyazı M.K. Ama stoj 20 lira posta. To stoj 20 lira mazgu dam na banka, to što tu istegli banka, to da si plotija najemo što tu štepa na masku. Onlar istedim güzel hayatta olsunlar, güzel yaşasınlar, benim gibi çilet çekmesinler, hani kazanda gezeyim onlar da benim gibi olmasın. Mesleğe dostları yaparsan vakti mi olsa ben yaparım her şey onlara. Ev çarıp bak doya kaza bankta da kaja çıtraya da plastik mi bankta değil mi şarkı? We are trying this year to continue our work from the previous years, uh, to keep working with uh, the same children um, and continue to see development in them. And we also want to start working with new children. We want to encourage them, to motivate them. This is our main purpose. We're working with them, teaching them Bulgarian language, math and other things, but more important than that is to motivate them to want to graduate school. And if they become determined that this is what they're going to do, we believe that they can make it. We want to try to motivate them, to encourage them, to tell them that they can do it. And we believe that they can do it. If we are there and if we are trying to help, it's because we believe that what we do is actually working and we can help them. And I think it makes a big difference when we work with them and train them that this is not a cycle that they need to live in with child abuse. Uh, sex trafficking, uh, prostitution. This is not the way you have to go. You don't have to get married at age 13 years old. You don't have to start a family at that age. You can have an education. You can be somebody and you can make a difference in your country and you can make a difference in your life and change yourself. I hope to encourage these children, to give them hope that they are able to succeed and they continue their education. But most of all, I see that they need love and we give them this love, but also we receive love from them. When they see us, they are happy and full of joy and that shows us that all we do is not meaningless.
You know, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 5, Jesus says, Whosoever receives one child like this in my name receives me. I want to thank everyone who has made any of our missions projects over the last 40 something years possible. You know, we're now in Bulgaria. This will be our fourth year. We are helping so many children there. And it's because of the, the, the contributions, the love that you bestow uh, through the broadcasting to these kids. Uh, but I also want to thank those that's made any of our mission trips pops, possible in Appalachia, in Bulgaria, uh, in Moldova in years past, and in Romania. Uh, we've even been in Mexico, but there's children all over the world suffering. Bulgaria is just where we're at this season. This is where God wants us, and this is where we're going to be. And through the, the love and the support of you, the viewers, we can make this possible again this year in Bulgaria. Thank you again. We love you.